Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am financial planner Canna Campbell, also known as Sugar Mama. Now a quick reminder, please make sure number one, you are subscribed to my YouTube channel because I am back to publishing a fresh video for you every Thursday afternoon. Now, I also recommend you are following me on both of my Instagram accounts, Sugar Mama TV for all your financial motivation, education and inspiration daily. And if you're looking to have a laugh with me inside my personal life, of course, at Canna Campbell Official, where I do lots of beauty hacks, capsule wardrobe fashion, and I have a really good laugh at the juggle of motherhood. All right, so today's video is a very top line video. It's a short but sweet video. Where to start when it comes to improving your finances? If you met me or bump into me and you asked me a couple of questions about what to do and where to start, this is the video for you. All right, so let's get started. Number one is your mindset. Can I highly recommend you invest some time exploring your mindset and really understanding your why? Why do you want to improve your finances? If you don't have a good why that you're really passionately connected to and understand, when it comes to challenges or setbacks, you're gonna lose motivation, you're gonna throw the towel in, and then you're gonna continue on drifting through life. So what I recommend you do is you sit down and write a long list of why you want to improve your financial well-being beyond the obvious things. So really think about what it means to you. It means you're gonna sleep well at night knowing that your finances are in order. You're gonna feel comfort when you're working knowing that your, all your finances are working for you and eventually you can retire or eventually you can work part-time or potentially you can start up that new business that you've always dreamt about. You really need to connect with your why. For me, it's about freedom. It's about choice. I love when I'm sitting at my desk working away. I know that my money is working for me. I have some really great goals set for myself that's going to allow my family to be able to go on holidays, which gives us choice, freedom, experience, luxury. I have great comfort in knowing that I don't need to work until age 65. I'm working on my financial journey. I'm working on my financial well-being, and eventually I can cut down to part-time work, maybe two or three days a week. So for me, connecting with my why really helps me stay the course. It means that I'm committed, I'm determined, and I can help get through any challenges or setbacks with amazing resilience. So invest time exploring your why. Number two is to start setting yourself some very simple, short-term, small financial goals to work towards. When you set a big goal that's so far in the future, it's very easy to disconnect or forget about it and just revert back to your old habits, which means quite often drifting through life again. So can I recommend you have one great big financial goal, such as retirement by a certain age or saving up a certain amount of money, but can you please break those down into short-term mini goals that are all in positive alignment to achieving that one big goal. So say for example, your goal is to be able to retire on a passive income of say $80,000 a year. How about you set yourself a small goal to build up say $2,000 of passive income by the 1st of April, 2023. By doing this, it's so much more achievable and doable. And you realize that valuable time is ticking because that date is coming up very, very quickly. And each time you catch yourself spending money or wasting money or doing something that's not in positive alignment to that goal, because it's a short-term goal, it will bring you back, back to the present moment and you'll be more likely likely to change your habits, change your routine so that you're working on that goal. And I'll tell you what, I always say progress fuels success. You might achieve that goal of $2,000 per year in passive income, which is amazing. You know that you are one step closer to then achieving that $80,000 a year. So make sure all your goals are short term, mini and positively aligned to one big, exciting goal that you're really connected to. Step number three is to get the debt in your life under control. If you have highly toxic debt in your life, such as credit card debt, personal loans, car loans, can you please make sure that you prioritize paying those off as quickly as possible? A great way to make sure that you pay that debt off as quickly as possible is to put those debt repayment plans into your budget. But make sure you are paying the maximum your budget allows. Now that you can do some extra things to pay off that debt even faster, which I highly recommend doing, and that is to have a side hustle. 
What other things can you do in your life to bring in some extra money that you can pay that debt off as fast as possible by making lump sum repayments in an ad hoc way? And even if there are only little extra payments like $10, $5, $1, $100, just do it because that habit system of making extra payments is incredibly powerful because you can then use those habits to start building wealth rather than actually paying off bad toxic habits. So look at what you can declutter in your home. Look at what extra work you can do on the weekends. Maybe you could do some babysitting. Maybe you can do some dog sitting. Maybe you can do some house sitting. Maybe you could rent out a spare bedroom. Look at all the wild and wonderful things that we can do in this day and age to bring in some extra money into our lives and put that money the moment it hits your bank account towards the debt in your life. Now, if you are debt free, amazing, that's fantastic. You can then put that extra money in your life towards that goal that you set for yourself in step number two. Just make sure you're focusing on all those short term goals first, because they're all the little but very, very powerful goals that are going to help make sure that you achieve that big goal, that big financial dream of yours. Step number four is emergency money. Everybody needs emergency money and no, your credit card is not your emergency money. I hate to break it to you. That doesn't mean you shouldn't have a credit card, but please don't think of your credit card as being your emergency money. You must have emergency money set aside. Now, if you have a home loan, you can sometimes look at using an offset account or a redraw facility to help you save valuable time and interest when it comes to emergency money. Just make sure that you have the right amount of emergency money set up that matches your responsibilities and your risks. There is no one size fits all when it comes to having the right amount of emergency money. So work out what is the right amount that you need in your life to make sure that you get a great night's sleep. Step number five is to fix your superannuation accounts. Where is your superannuation money? How much do you have? And most importantly, where is that superannuation money invested? Superannuation is so incredibly important. It is essentially your investment portfolio just simply locked away for your long-term benefit because the government knows if we could access that money, we would spend it, we would blow it. And that is not desirable when it comes to retirement. So make sure you start paying attention to your superannuation as soon as possible. Ideally, you should have your superannuation consolidated, but that does not mean rushing out and rolling all your superannuation accounts because you need to be very careful of any fees, taxes, charges, and loss benefits, such as insurance, like life and TBD cover and income protection that might be attached to your superannuation. So that is when you want to ideally reach out and speak to a financial planner to them to help consolidate your superannuation for you. So when it comes to working out the right superannuation investments, I highly recommend doing a risk profile and making sure your investments match your risk profile. Always keep me in mind that the longer time you have to invest, typically speaking, under general advice only, the more risk you can afford. And remember, you always want to make sure that you maximize your opportunities for long term capital growth and income. Remember, you want your money working for you, which includes your superannuation money. Number six, and I think this is probably the most powerful step of all, and I think a lot of financial influencers and some even financial planners forget about this, and that is to have a powerful goal that is focused around passive income, building passive income in your life. Say, for example, your goal, as I said before, is to build up a passive income of over $80,000 a year. That $80,000 a year may mean that you can afford to retire or cut down to part time work or potentially afford to take two international holidays per year, whatever your heart desires. That is why I highly recommend having a passive income goal, because that means your money is working for you and paying you an income. You don't have to necessarily work for that income. So by working on your financial goals based around this passive income, this is what's going to give you true and authentic financial freedom. Now, don't forget your superannuation does pay you passive income, but remember it's just locked and it gets reinvested, which is why it's so important to include superannuation as part of your financial well-being and your overall financial strategy in combination with other financial strategies. So make sure you sit down and look at how much passive income you have in your life, how much you want to build 
year upon year, focused around all those short-term mini bite-sized goals. Now, on top of your superannuation, you can also start to look at including an investment portfolio to help achieve that passive income goal. And again, that's why that risk profile is so incredibly helpful and important to help you work out what are the right investments for you, your financial deadline, and your financial goals and dreams. And of course, taking into consideration how much risk you are comfortable taking. Now, I should point out, it is very valuable to check your risk profile every couple of years, because as you become more experienced and more educated when it comes to investing, it is highly likely that your risk profile may evolve. So initially you might find you're a balanced investor, but then you do it again a few years later after learning how to invest in all the different asset classes, and you might discover you are now actually a growth investor, which means you need to adjust your portfolio and potentially look to add in some more long-term aggressive investments such as shares or property. But it's important that you always be in touch with what your risk profile is. And then finally, if you're looking to fix your finances as quickly and as easily as possible, look into your personal insurances. What personal insurances do you have in place? Personal insurances are incredibly valuable because they help protect your financial well-being to the best of your ability. Think about it. If you could not work due to medical reasons, would you still be able to pay the rent or the mortgage? Would you still be able to put food on the table? How long could you last before all of your emergency savings eroded away? Would you have to borrow money from family and friends to survive? If you're answering these questions, you're starting to get worried or panicked. This is why you need to think about personal insurance. My number one recommendation when it comes to looking into personal insurance is start with income protection. Income protection pays you up to 75% of your income if you cannot work due to medical reasons. That's accidents and illnesses. If a doctor says you cannot go to work, this is when an income protection policy can be very valuable because it might help cover your cost of living. So look into that policy if you don't have one. The next one is, of course, trauma cover. Now this pays a lump sum in the event of you suffering a major medical trauma. Unlike income protection, it's actually paid as a tax-free lump sum payment. And again, I have seen this help families out in so many different ways. It's helped wipe out the mortgage. It's helped pay for recovery and rehabilitation. It's helped pay for trips overseas where certain treatments are not available in Australia. And the last two insurances that I highly recommend you look into are total and permanent disablement and of course, life cover. These sorts of insurances are incredibly valuable. And if you start to feel unwell or you go and see a doctor or an ambulance is called, quite often it is too late to suddenly apply for this cover. So be proactive when it comes to financial well-being and set your personal insurances up the correct way so that you can relax and know that no matter what happens, you're still gonna be able to work on those financial goals and dreams that are really important to you. All right, everyone, that is very, very top level stuff when it comes to your financial well-being. Let me know what particular point you want me to go into in more detail in the next video, and I will make that for you. But please know that I am back and I'm making a greater balance for you when it comes to the finance videos, as well as, of course, all the lifestyle videos that you also really love and enjoy. All right, everyone, thanks for watching, and don't forget both of my Instagram accounts. Ciao for now.